Tonight, does Oculus own the rights to Rift? A better look at what Amazon's smartphone may look like. Surprise, Microsoft patches XP and Basic turns 50. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 78 for Thursday, May 1st, 2014. I'm Sarah Lane, and let's get right into the tech feed. Okay, let's see if I can explain this one. Game publisher ZeniMax claims that Facebook-owned Oculus VR violated an intellectual property agreement over its soon-to-be-released VR headset, the Oculus Rift. Now, Oculus CTO John Carmack was still an employee of ZeniMax subsidiary id Software until last November, but Carmack told USA Today in February that part of the reason he left id was that ZeniMax wasn't interested enough in the Rift. However, back in May of 2012, id and Oculus signed a non-disclosure agreement over the sharing of Carmack's progress on virtual reality as an id employee. Now, although Carmack isn't named explicitly in the NDA, ZeniMax's stance is that all of his work, not just the code, as an employee was owned by the company, which expected compensation if that work ever made it into a money-making product. Well, now that Facebook purchased the company for $2 billion and received FTC approval last week, ZeniMax has stepped forward. We will keep up to date on the goings on in that situation. All right, let's talk about Microsoft. It announced today it's releasing an emergency patch for uh, Internet Explorer to fix a zero day flaw found in IE6 through IE11. And the company says the update, quote, is fully tested and ready for release for all affected versions of the browser. Microsoft is also issuing a security update for Windows XP users, even though XP is no longer supported by the company. In a statement, Microsoft warned, quote, just because this update is out now doesn't mean you should stop thinking about getting off Windows XP and moving to a newer version of Windows and the latest version of Internet Explorer. However, XP still has over 26% market share. Time to update, kids. Amazon is expanding its same-day shipping service by allowing later ordering times in certain cities, also adding Dallas and San Francisco to the dozen cities where it's available. Some customers can now place an order as late as 12.15 p.m. and get it by 9 p.m. that night. Amazon Prime members in San Francisco, Phoenix, Seattle, Dallas, and Los Angeles, and later other markets will now play a flat $5.99 fee for same-day delivery for up to about 150 pounds of goods. Previously, it was $3.99 for each item. Now, all aboard the Amazon rumor train, Boy Genius Report has what it says multiple trusted sources verify is a real image of Amazon's smartphone that reveals the design. Specs reportedly include a 4.7-inch display with 720p HD resolution, quad-core Qualcomm Snapdragon processor, two gigs of RAM, six individual camera modules, and a customized version of Android OS similar to the one in the Kindle Fire tablets. Again, just a rumor for now. All right, let's talk about some social media. Certain users of Twitter's iOS and Android clients are now seeing an option to mute accounts that they follow, which keeps another user's tweets and retweets from appearing in their timeline without having to unfollow them. It's already pretty handy in apps like TweetDeck and TweetBot, that's a third-party app, for muting event tweets or TV show spoilers or just people that drive you nuts. No word on an official rollout just yet. Snapchat has claimed over 700 million snaps shared per day on the service. That's huge. And just got more interesting. The updated app now lets you text friends. Though in true Snapchat form, once you leave a conversation, the messages are gone. The new app also lets you video chat with friends in real time, instead of what CEO Evan Spiegel describes is a planned call in advance on services like Skype or FaceTime. Foursquare has announced a brand new app called Swarm that will now exist alongside the current Foursquare app. Swarm will be a social heat map helping users find friends nearby and check in to share low location, kind of like the old Foursquare. A completely rewritten new Foursquare app launching in about a month will ditch the check-in and focus solely on exploration and discovery and provide optimal local search. Finally, in our social block, Vine is expanding its web experience to better mirror its app experience. Now, 
Alongside with your Vine feed and user profile streams, you'll see a featured section that includes editor's picks, cool playlists, and special featured videos. You'll also have access to channels, trending tags, and a popular page, again, just like the Vine app. You also no longer have to be logged in to watch any video or peruse any channel. Coming up, a smart bike that syncs with your smartphone and when you can get one. But first, I am now joined by Harry McCracken, editor at large for time.com and technologizer. Hi, Harry. Hey, Sarah. How are you? Great, thanks. How are you? Very well. Well, you wrote quite the article today. It's called 50 Years of Basic, the Programming Language that Made Computers Personal. It's quite a read. I, I guess my first question is, now, 50 years have gone by. Why was BASIC so important? Well, a lot of people remember BASIC because from 1975 until uh, about 15 years ago, it came on almost every PC, and a lot of folks fiddled with that. But uh, it was invented at Dartmouth College by these two math professors, John Kameny and Thomas Kurtz. And uh, at a time when almost nobody who was not a computer scientist had even seen a computer or really even understood what computers could do, they figured computers were really going to be important moving forward and that computer literacy should be part of almost everybody's education. And they came up with BASIC to make it easy for almost anybody to program a computer and get some experience with it. So where did Microsoft come in? Tell us about the Microsoft connection. Sure. Well, um, about 10 years later, the first popular microcomputer, the Altair, came along. And uh, this guy named Paul Allen and his friend, who was a Harvard student named Bill Gates, got all excited, and it occurred to them that they could probably write a version of BASIC that could run on the Altair. And so they did that, and uh, people loved it. And then other computers, like the Apple II and the TRS-80, came along, and Microsoft started licensing its BASIC to all of those. And before long, almost every computer came with Microsoft software. Now, at one point, you mentioned that the, the original creators we're not really all that excited with what people were using BASIC for. What, what, what were they hoping? Well, um, when Microsoft and some other companies that did PC BASICs created them, first of all, they had to cram them into a very little memory because the early PCs didn't really have much space. And they also kind of tinkered with them and they added new commands for graphics and sound, which varied from computer to computer, and they weren't terribly elegant. And so Kemeny and Kurtz were not thrilled with these BASICs because uh, they, they envisioned BASIC as a language that would run the same on every computer. And Microsoft BASIC was not like that. If, if you had a, a program written for the Apple II version of Microsoft BASIC and you wanted to make it work on your TRS-80, you'd have to tinker with it. Well, regardless, it certainly was a big influencer of programming languages that came after. Like, for example, what, what, did, BASIC, what did BASIC influence? What, how, what did it help come to life? Well, if you got interested in PCs during this period, you almost certainly started programming in BASIC. So uh, when I wrote my story, I heard from all these developers who started out with BASIC, and it, it got them going for sure. Um, and it was you know, widely taught in schools for a long time. So it was, it was sort of part of a basic math education for a long time. And it really started only started to fade away um, when, compute, when Windows came out and the Mac came out. And neither of those... Uh, operating systems came with BASIC. And once it was no longer in front of your face, it, it was no longer as important, even though if you wanted to seek out BASIC, you can still find it today. You, know, you mentioned it was taught in some high schools. Is there any BASIC still being taught anywhere just as kind of like the fundamentals of programming or, 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 or something that, that could help a computer science major understand why programming languages are the way they are today? Not really. And, you know, as cool as BASIC is, uh, it was designed in the in the 60s. It kind of evolved through the 70s into the 80s. Um, but today, I, I think that if you're interested in programming, you want to do something like build a website or maybe build an iPhone app. And there is a, a fairly large gap in between what BASIC intended to do and the stuff people want to do today. And I think it's kind of a shame that nothing else came along that had you know, the approachability of BASIC, which was designed for the modern era. We, we lost something. Well, 50 years of BASIC, uh, that's, uh, I don't know, it's hard to believe it's been that long. Harry McCracken, editor-at-large for Time.com and Technologizer, thanks so much for talking with us today. Thank you. Tell folks where they can uh, find more of your great work online. Sure, uh, come to Time.com and <laughs> click on Technology or, or check me out as Harry McCracken on Twitter. Excellent. Thanks, Harry.
All right, finally, a new Kickstarter project still raising money from a company called Van Hawks is creating a bicycle called Velour that incorporates smartphones, GPS, and fitness tracking to track your rides, give you directions, even alert you to passing cars. So the way it works is a paired app stores riding data and that would allow you as a cyclist to set up a route so that the bike can display directions. You've got LEDs on the left or right handlebar when approaching a turn to signal which direction you need to go. And then the bike also senses when cars are getting too close and will vibrate the handlebar to make you aware. If the project is funded, and that's an if, the Velour will be made as a single speed, a fixie, or with a gear hub with price is ranging from 990, $999 to $1,249 Canadian dollars. It'll be available in the U.S. and Canada and in October, just in time for the rainy season. That's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. Subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. Write us at TN2 at twit.tv. And don't miss Tech News today, tomorrow, and every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Sarah Lane. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by CashFly.com.